six years ago, uh, I purchased East West and have just continued to grow it since then. My background is I've been in high tech forever. I usually go to like a small company that I try to help do something exciting with. Having a strong, cohesive culture is, is uh, those aren't just platitudes, like it's, it's a real thing. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm with Andy Sala of East West Manufacturing. Uh, thanks for having us today. Yeah, thanks for coming. Love it. Yeah, uh, so this is our first episode in a series where we highlight uh, local country manufacturers, electronic manufacturing, and OEMs. And so thanks for being the first one. Guinea pig, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, first question is, uh, can you tell us about East West? Sure. Uh, we're East West Manufacturing, uh, recently located in Round Rock, Texas. We actually just moved into this new facility, uh, built this facility last year, and lived in last year. Um, and we do contract manufacturing, electronic manufacturing services, mostly print circuit board assembly, as well as other electromechanical types of assembly. Okay, awesome. And I know your background is was more in um, was startups, right? Yeah, I did a. Um, I've, I've done a. I have a high tech background. Worked in a number of different uh, smaller companies that um, fortunately got either acquired or had an IPO. Um, and I've been on the customer side of a contract manufacturer before, but I had never been uh, at a contract manufacturer. And so about six years ago, uh, I purchased East West and have just continued to grow it since then. Awesome. What interest you, interested you about the space? Um, you know, I think one of the most interesting things about this uh, area is as a contract manufacturer and, and not an OEM is you get to work with a lot of OEMs that are building the next generation of whatever new technology is out there that exists. Um, and so you get exposure to a lot of different projects that if, if you weren't building it for them, you would not know that thing existed right. as a technology. Yeah. And, and it's just fascinating to see the evolution of, of what's possible and be able to participate in that. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, we get to see all sorts of projects. It's, it's always like, oh, like how did they think of that? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of get to work on the cutting edge and start out with those prototypes. Yeah. yeah. The first, uh, you know, sometimes I say is like, uh, we, uh, we almost are like the delivery doctors giving birth to, to yeah. somebody's baby. And, For uh, sure. And, uh, to that end, we have had times where we absolutely have a bunch of design engineers uh, circled around the reflow oven, waiting for the first boards to come out, taking pictures, nice. just like expecting fathers. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fun to watch. That's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing how like small the architecture has gotten to. Like I've oh. seen some of the boards, like it's the size of like a quarter. That's right. You know, and like we built. Uh, Boards as big as giant load boards uh, for you know semiconductor manufacturers yeah. that are that probably weigh like twenty pounds a piece. Wow, they're, you know, they're almost half an inch thick. Down to uh, you know, just as you're saying, uh, very small footprint. Uh, actually, some of the projects we build are, are watches, like literally watches. Oh, really? Circuit boards for for uh, watches. So that's awesome. Um, you know, uh, and very fine pitch, uh, extremely. A uh, small uh, amount of real estate there. Yeah, that's cool. And so, given what's going on with the industry with all the the shortages and everything, how, what what have you seen from your perspective? Uh, oh well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe Gosh. a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. How much time do you have? Yeah. I, uh, uh, yeah uh, supply chain has been a huge issue, as you are, of course, extremely aware. Of. Yes. Um, and the. Uh, you know, during the course of the last, let's call it 24 months now, actually probably 30 to 36 months of pre-COVID to the start of COVID to the middle of the COVID to, to hopefully the end of COVID. Yeah. Um, has just been a huge challenge on supply chain um, and has caused all sorts of dynamics in how you need to approach purchasing and try to get components yeah. uh, to be able to build projects. I know the brokers are having a field day right now. Yes, the brokers are having a field day. Um, I think that may be coming to an end for certain sets of, of components, certain okay. ICs. I mean, ICs have been the, the biggest challenge in general. Yeah. Um, and we see some of those actually coming in now, uh, things that were at a 52 week or a 99 week lead time. I think they only put 99 week in there because they probably have just two digits to work with. And yeah. that, that's probably means infinity. 
Um, I feel like that's like a go away number. Yes, I don't even, <laughs> don't even ask the number. Um, but uh, we're starting to see some of those come down or some things that are like at a 30 week lead time just show up. Like the, wow. The old, and, and so I think the dynamics are changing finally. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be really helpful in the next six to 12 months. That's good. That's really good. How do you feel like the industry is progressing? Like what, what do you kind of see as like some of the big things that are coming up in, in like the CM world? Um, well, uh, technologies keep advancing. Now we see a whole lot of basically RF radio frequency everything. Um, so, you know, and that can be Bluetooth, ultra wideband, uh, cellular technologies. Um, um, I, we see a lot of customers just taking advantage of the fact that you can track anything anywhere and, you know, find a location of something and communicate from that device to something else. Um, and then tend to have uh, um, some sort of software service on top of a hardware platform. So hardware becomes the enabler for uh, their service that they're yeah. selling to their end customers. Um, so we see a lot of that, like a lot of, uh, generally speaking, industrial, commercial, IoT, and IIoT, industrial IoT. Yeah. Um, a lot of things in that realm. I feel like the IIoT stuff is just really getting started. Yes, I mean, it seems like it's been here a while, but also it seems like we're we're just on the, the very first yeah. stages of everything. Um, uh, and, and then we see the same thing like in medical. We have a, 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 a lot of medical customers where they're, you know, coming up with extremely innovative new technologies um, that we're building for them and, and uh, you know, that we are, are you know, get the, uh, you know, we, we get the honor of building it for them, basically, yeah. and bringing that uh, a new revolutionary technology that helps either fight disease or, you know, helps uh, patients. And so that's, that's fun as well. That's awesome. That's really cool. So one of my other questions is if you're, say it's like a company, like is starting up as a hardware company, and they're unfamiliar with working with the CM, how could you, what would you, how would you guide them on like best ways to work with the CM? Um, well, I think the best is, is really like where uh, we both approach it as a partnership, right? And so we know uh, our role is basically the manufacturing arm for that customer. Um, that they, that's, it's a, it would be very challenging for probably most OEMs to desire and actually uh, execute on building it in house. Like that's, building in the house is, is very difficult. It's a big have a whole set of machines that are, you know, behind us right now, that, yeah. uh, you know, to do, to do that and a lot of processes and, and so forth. So we get that they're handing off to us to go build something. Um, but then it's, it's really about, uh, can you work together as a partner and work through issues? Uh, with, you know, something uh, isn't passing tests. Why? Let's go investigate that. Let's let's figure it out. Uh, is there a design change or is there a manufacturing issue or what have you? Um, so as long as both parties kind of approach it like uh, I sometimes say it's like the, the business version of being married. Like you just gotta like each give one hundred fifty percent. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then you probably would be okay. Yeah. Um, and, so that's how we view it. It's like just they're, you know, almost like our, our friends or colleagues are, you know, somebody we work with every day. But yeah. And then it tends to work really well. That's great. Yeah, no one needs to point a finger, just work through it. Yeah, just, yeah, everybody, if, when you're, once you're through the trenches with somebody, like if you get in the trenches, you roll up your sleeves and you, you, you resolve whatever issue, Yeah. Uh, you know, that really builds strong relationships. Okay, nice. How do you think the, the quoting software has evolved from like since you started, you know, six years ago? Quoting? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there used to be, and there still are, so, uh, tools in that realm. I think it's they've gotten a lot better, a lot faster, a lot more accurate. Um, uh, I think a lot of the, uh, uh, you know, websites that you can go to, uh, you know, to go find parts and alternates and all the types of things uh, yeah. and APIs that you can leverage to, to call it, to get more accurate information. Uh, it's advanced quite a bit in just the last few years and it's, it's made it somewhat easier, uh, on the quoting side. Uh, that said, uh, the hardest part, uh, you know, going back to the supply chain issue is just actually finding the parts. Yes. Um, so uh, that requires a lot of um, sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah. and, and, 
you know, I, I, I joke sometimes that purchasing has become a full contact sport. Yeah. Like, you, like you have to be really aggressive and assertive to yeah. you know, and leverage relationships. And, you know, we much cherish our relationship that we have with yeah. you guys to like help us get to get parts. Um, because that's the biggest thing right now. Can you actually go find the parts? Yeah. Or the alternates? Or the alternates of the alternates? Yeah. You know, can you get something in the door Yeah. you can, you can build? Yeah, we still have customers that come on live chat like, is this actually in stock? Right. Do you have this anywhere? I was like, yes. If you wanted someone to go around and check, I can. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, they get so nervous. Yes. It's make or break. Right. And they're like, okay, well, then I'm buying it right now. Yeah. Right? Like, there's, there's been this, that's one of the things that it's been this last 18 months is just this land grab for just go get it, ask questions like, you know, just go, go buy it and get it in house just to be able to have it to build. Yeah. Because many times, if you wait, a day or sometimes even an hour sometimes even 10 minutes yeah that part is gone right so it's it's been very challenging yeah a lot of people don't realize that even like a you know from a hundred dollar part to a point zero 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 one part it can break down production yeah it only takes one right? yeah because you know and uh, you know sometimes we say that you know if I have 99 percent of the parts it doesn't help me yeah. I, I still can't know it, right? Uh, you know, there's there's not a customer out there that would want to print a circuit board that's missing a part. Yeah. You know, it's not going to work. Right. Um, so uh, you have to get 100. percent That's that's the challenge for sure. And then uh, kind of on the uh, kind of business side, I think what, what's some of the best advice that's been given to you, just in general about business? About business, um, I think uh, the biggest thing that I focus on is uh, relationships and culture. Um, so as far as like internally in, in the, inside the company, um, having a strong cohesive culture is, is uh, those aren't just platitudes, like it's, it's a real thing, right? You have to have uh, an environment where everybody enjoys working together. Yeah. Um, you know, you spend most of your, uh, a lot of your waking hours with your colleagues at work. And if that's a place that you go every day and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have to, to go talk to Andy uh, today and like I, I don't even want to see his face or, or yeah. uh, there's, there's, not, there's something not enjoyable about going there every day, then, then that's an issue, right? And you don't want those kinds of problems. No. Um, you want it to be kind of familial and everybody's you know, working together, working towards a common goal. Um, so culture is a big piece of it, um, but also relationships, customer relationships, partner relationships, just, just like we're talking here today. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big part of it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Last question. Uh, what do you feel like, uh, sets East West apart? How would you, uh, like, it's kind of like your plug for East West. <laughs> sure. I mean, um, you know, sometimes I say like we don't. I don't feel like we really do any sales and marketing, and so a lot of it's just uh, uh, just warm referrals. Uh, somebody says, "Hey, who can build this for us?" And somebody will recommend us. Yeah. And uh, and I feel that's primarily because um, we care. Like we we really try to work really closely with customers and uh, you know exceed their expectations on quality and timeliness. I think the fact that we uh, customers see us as growing, like uh, you know, we it wasn't all that long ago that we were building primarily prototypes and, and weren't doing uh, a lot of production. But I would say that's flipped, and we're doing probably primarily production these okay. days. That's uh, great. And and we had to build this facility to, to achieve that just to because we were growing organically yeah. and just ran out of space, and so we. Uh, we increased our space by about a factor of five uh, when we built this this building. Um, it's a beautiful building, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, we, you know it's purpose built you know, yeah. for for doing contract manufacturing. Um, and I think also it's uh, the other or another reason customers tend to like working with us um, is because we are very quality certified. So we're ISO 9001, of course, but also ISO 1345 for medical, uh, ASNA 100 for aerospace, uh, ITAR, you know, uh, IPC 610, every certification you can have yeah. pretty much. Um, That's great. So it makes it sort of an easy choice for them um, yeah. to, to work with us. And, uh, you know, and then it's just attention to detail and just exceed expectations. And so that's what we try to do. Awesome.
thank you so much for your time. It's been great. Yeah, I love it. I'm glad you're doing this, and I look forward to seeing more of these. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed.